Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 16 to 20 of the Algebra 1 Common Core New York Regents exam for January 2015. All right, let's take a look at um, 16. It says the equation for the volume of a cylinder is V equals pi R squared H. The positive value of R in terms of H and V is, so um, what you're being asked to do in this problem is to solve the formula for the volume of a cylinder, V equals pi R square H for R. Okay, we're going to get R isolated. So how do we get R, R isolated? We'll just get rid of pi and h first and then lastly get rid of square okay so to get rid of um, pi and h from the right side of the equation is as though we're solving um, solving an equation for r we'll divide both sides by pi and h because pi and h have been multiplied by r square uh, on the right side and the inverse of multiplication is division so divide can undo multiplication. So pi goes into itself once and goes into that once. H goes into itself once and goes into that once. And then using the reflexive property of equality, we'll have R square equals V, the volume, over pi H. And then lastly, to isolate um, R, we'll do the inverse of square, which is square root. So we take the square root of the left side and the right side square and square roots cancel out and this implies that our final answer r is the square root of v over pi h okay answer is option number one all right let's take a look at problem 17 it says which equation has the same solutions as x squared plus 7x plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. So what you notice in the four options is that the squares have been completed, okay? So all we're asking to do is complete the square in this expression right here and see which one, match, uh, which of these expressions matches to that form, okay? So we have x squared plus 6x minus 7. So we're going to create an incomplete square on the left side by uh, adding 7 to both sides, what do we accomplish by that? We are um, creating an incomplete square and getting rid of that constant, okay? So we have x squared plus 6x um, equals positive 7. You notice I left a space here. We're going to be adding a number, a special number that will make this expression on the left side a perfect square trinomial. Okay, in order not to change the problem, whatever we add to the left side, we, might, we must add that same number to the right side. Okay, so x squared plus 6x plus what makes this a perfect square trinomial? In order to find out what that is, we just evaluate b <coughs> over 2 square. Okay, so b in this case is 6. We'll divide that by 2, which is 3. And then we'll square that and we'll get 9. So if we add 9 to this expression on the left side, this becomes a perfect square trinomial. In order to uh, keep the problem the same as the original, we have to add the same number to the right side of the equation. Okay, now how do we factor this perfect square trinomial? We're going to use a shortcut. Simply read the first and the last term and bring down the first middle sign, okay, which is plus. So our factored form will be x plus square root of 9 is 3, quantity square equals 7 plus 9, which is 16. Our answer is option number 4. All right, let's take a look at problem 18. It says two functions, y equals the absolute value of x minus 3 and 3x plus 3y equals 27 are graphed on the same set of axes. Which statement is true about the solution 
to the system of equations. So we're basically looking for where they intersect. The intersection is the solution to the system, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and graph it. Uh, we're going to start with the first one, which is y equals um, the absolute value of x minus b. I mean, x minus 3. Okay, so this is a absolute value function, a standard absolute value function that shifted three units to the right. Okay, so you just graph your standard absolute value function and just shift it three units to the right. Okay, and then the other one is uh, 3x plus 3y equals 27. I'm going to graph this one right here, the second one, 3x plus 3y. I'm going to graph this one using intercepts, okay? So to graph this using intercepts, you just set one variable to zero to find the x, to find the intercept of the other variable, okay? So for example, if I want to find the x-intercept, I'm just going to go 3x-intercept plus 3 times 0 equals 27. Notice to get the x-intercept, you set y to 0. 3 times the x-intercept is equal to 27. Divide both sides by 3, and you get your x-intercept equals 9, okay? If you do the same thing uh, on the right side, if you want to get the y-intercept, you're going to get the same value too. Let's go ahead and do that over here. So if you want to find the y-intercept, let me partition my workspace so we don't get confused. <clears throat> if you want to find the y-intercept, you're just going to go 3 times 0 for x plus 3 times the y-intercept equals 27. That goes to 0, so we have 3 times the y-intercept. y-intercept equals 27. Then you divide both sides by 3, and you get um, 3 as, I mean, 9 as your y-intercept as we did earlier. So your y-intercept is 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it. The first one, I'm going to shift it 3 units to the right. So I'm going to shift my x-axis to the left somewhat. And then my, I mean, my y-axis to the left. And then my x-axis, I want to make it sufficiently long to include 9. Okay? All right, so the first one, the vertex, the vertex for this is at 0, 0 uh, originally. And then when you shift it to the right 3 units, the vertex is going to be at 3, 0. So you just shift it 1, 2, Three, and that's the vertex. Now, how do you graph your absolute value function? It's just like a V, okay? Your rise and your run are going to be uh, positive one and negative one to the left and to the right of this vertex right here. So you have a dot one, it just keeps going like that. And then on the other side, all right, it's just your standard absolute value function shifted three units to the right, okay? Let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, now there, there you have it. That's a graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Now, what we're going to graph next is the second one. We're going to graph that using the um, intercepts that we just determined. There are other ways you can graph the second line right here, but I like, I like to use intercepts when the line is given in standard form, okay? All right, so your x-intercept for the line, I'm going to draw that line in blue. Uh, your x-intercept is 9, so that means the second graph intersects the uh, x-axis at 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, so one point is right here. That's your x-intercept, um, which is 9. And then your y-intercept is 9 also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there goes your y-intercept. Okay, so we just simply connect um, these two points, and that will be our second line, the graph of 3x plus 3y equals 27. Let's go ahead and graph that. All right, so there goes the second line, the green one. Um, the, line of, the line of the equation, 3x plus 3y equals 27. 
Now, what's the solution? The solution is where they intersect. They intersect right at this point right here. So we just find the coordinates, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the x coordinate of your solution. One, two, three. That's the y coordinate of your solution. So we can clearly see that our solution is six comma three. Okay, so there you read off this high read of your solution. Um, solution is three comma six. I'm sorry, six comma three. Solution is a point of intersection, right? Is six comma three. Take a look at our options here. Our answer is option number three. 6, 3 is a solution to the system because it satisfies both equations. All right, for number 19, it reads, Miriam and Jessica are growing bacteria in a lab. Miriam uses the growth function f of t equals n raised to the 2t, while Jessica uses the function g of t equals n to the 4t, where n represents the initial number of bacteria and t um, is the time in hours. If Miriam starts with 16 bacteria, how many bacteria should Jessica start with to achieve the same growth over time? So we have um, Miriam. Miriam has the function. Uh, she says f of t equals n, the number of bacteria raised to 2t. We also know that she has... Um, she has 16 bacteria to start with. Let's not forget that. And then Jessica, she has the model J of T. No, I'm sorry, G of T. How did that happen? I have no idea. Anyway, Jessica, oh, I, I selected J for Jessica. Anyway, she has G of T equals N to the 4T power. We don't know how many she started with. That's what we're going to find. Um, the amount she started with, so they have the same growth rate. In order for them to have the same growth rate, we're going to be solving the exponential equation f of t equals g of t. Okay, that's what we're going to be solving. So we have, uh, we know what f of t is. f of t is Miriam's uh, function which is n to the 2t equals g of t, which is n to the 4t. Now, we know that n for Miriam is 16, so we can plug it in here. So we have 16 to the 2t equals n to the 4t, okay? This n is for uh, Miriam, I mean Jessica. That's what we need to uh, find in order for her to have the same growth rate as Miriam over time. So how do we solve this? Um, let's see. We have 4t as a power here, and this has a power of 2t. The question is, can we make both powers identical? There are different ways we can do this, but I'm just going to show you one way you can do this. Um, you can just isolate 16, okay, have 16 by itself. 16 to the 2t. Now, take a look at this. You have um, 4t. Can I express this as a multiple of 2t? The answer is yes. You can write this as, so we have 16 to the 2t. You can write this as n factor out 2 from 4t. What do you have left? 2t. So if you want to write this, as a multiple of 2t, you just factor out 2. So 2 times 2t gives you 4t. Why did I do that? Notice I can group it n square, and then we have identical powers. Okay, so if the, if the power is identical, then the basis must be identical also. Okay, so um, we can just count, since the powers are identical, we can cancel them out. And then we'll have 16 equals n square. How do we get n by itself? What is the opposite of square? Square root, you root both sides. And then you get n equals 4. So that's the amount of bacteria that Jessica has to start with in order to 
have the same growth rate as Miriam over time? So answer is option number four. Okay, the last one, number 20 in this installment, it says if a sequence is defined recursively by f of zero equals two, and f of n plus one is equal to negative two times f of n plus three, for n greater than or equal to zero, then f of two is equal to, all right, so let's see, how do we do this? Uh, we're starting with f of, we, f of zero, we have the recursive definition. So to get the next number, f of n plus one, in negative two times the previous number plus three, okay? That's how it works. So we already given the first number, f of zero, the value is two, we don't need any formula to figure this out. All right, how do we find f of one? f of 1 is equal to f of 0, the number before 1, plus 1. What is 0 plus 1? One? 1, right? Good. Why do I have 0 color coded? Well, that's what is going to be inputted into our formula, okay? Because you notice you have an n here, and that's what goes right there. All right, so let's go ahead and apply that. We're going to have negative 2 times f of zero, okay? F of zero is a number before F of one. That's what recursive definition is when you're depending on the number that occurs before you to determine your value, okay? So negative two times F of zero plus three. Now what is F of zero? F of zero is two, so we're gonna plug in two for F of zero. So we're gonna have negative two times f of zero, which is two, plus three. Using order of operations, negative two times two is negative four, plus three. Subtract and keep the number of the bigger one. I'm sorry, the sign of the bigger number, negative one. That's your value of f1. Are we done? No, nope, we're asked to find f2. Okay, so we're just gonna carry out the second iteration, f of two is going to be f of what, uh, what plus one gives you two? One plus one gives you two, right? So f of one plus one gives us f of two. So we're gonna have negative two times f of what? f of one, uh, I put zero, f of one. <clears throat> the number before two is one, so f of one, just following the formula, f of one plus three. Okay, and then we're going to have negative 2 times, now what is f of 1? f of 1 is negative 1, so we'll just simply put that value here, negative 1 plus 3. Okay, um, and then uh, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, positive 2 plus 3 is 5. And there goes your value for f of 2 option number three. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, we'd like to know what you think about this clip. If you liked it, do give us a thumbs up so we'll be motivated to do uh, the remainder of this review series. Um, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review installment. Uh, more clips can be found on mathgotserve.com under test prep. Go ahead and check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.